Hi, I'm Dennis Gage, and welcome to My Classic Car. Well, this week, we're in Ronneby, Sweden. <laughs> How cool is that? For Nostalgia Festival. This event is put on by Nostalgia Magazine and the Brun Hotel and Resort, and it's held in Ronneby's Bruns Park, one of the most beautiful parks in all Sweden. Actually, the word Brun means well in Swedish, and this is a spa area that dates back to the 1700s, but today, it's the site of an incredibly cool car happening. The Swedes are really into cars, and in fact, they're really into American cars, but there's everything imaginable here, and I'm dying to get around and check it all out. And in fact, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Welcome to Sweden. Say hi to America. Hi. Yuran, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm fine. What a fantastic event. I, I, I'm just blown away by this event. And this is your, is this your 10th year? Yes, it is. And, and it's, it's Nostalgia Festival. Yeah, that's right. Put on by yes. Nostalgia Magazine. Yes. <laughs> so how did you get started here? And how did you pull this off? because this is such a gorgeous facility. The park is fabulous. Yeah, we have this wonderful park here. Fabulous. And um, I said, hey, we got to do something here. <laughs> <laughs> this is too good to pass up. <laughs> and today we have the fine weather too. Yes, so, you know, it didn't look so good in the morning, but no. it's perfect now. Yeah. This is a pretty big show too. You've got a thousand cars or so? Yeah. You know, I, I sort of expected I'd see an awful lot of Volvos and Saabs yeah. in Sweden. And I've seen Volvos and Saabs, but they're in, in the minority. You certainly have a lot of American cars here in Sweden. Yeah, we do. You, you must like them. Here in Sweden, we import like five or 6,000 old American cars a year. A year? <laughs> and we restore them. <laughs> I, and they're beautiful. The restorations are phenomenal. It's so weird to see these, you know, big finned caddies and finned Mopars cruising yeah. around in, in Sweden. But then there's, there's Triumphs, there's cars from East Europe. Yeah. It's a great mix. I, I don't think I've ever actually been to the, a show that had a more diverse group of cars at it. Yeah, that's right. It's been a real education for me, and, I'm, and I've been having a great time. <laughs> this is a, it's one I might just have to come back to, but there's a car actually over there that I have never seen, and you may have to explain this one to me. Let's, let's take a little walk here. Okay. Well, Boo, this has always been a favorite car of mine, the 58 Chevy, first year for the Impala, mm -hmm. and I'm in Sweden. Yeah, yeah. Yes, we are. <laughs> this really is, this is a beautiful car and it's kind of a unique color. What was this called? It's called the uh, silver blue metallic. Silver blue metallic. Yeah. It, with the, you know, the, the dual fender mount mirrors and you've got the... Itronic eye. Itronic eye, which yeah. automatically dimmed the headlights, right? Exactly, exactly. And uh, wire, wheels, and are they Kelsey Hayes or...? No, they're made in the uh, UK, uh, Dunlop. Oh, okay. Factory. And with the spinners? No, the spinner is from uh, Chevrolet. So is that, is, that a, is that a boo mod? Yeah, that's it. So. <laughs> this is a really nice 58 Impala. And your interior is pretty much completely stock with a few other uh, options. You have the tissue dispenser. I like that. And a, and a spinner on the wheel. Do you, do you call them spinners? Yeah, here? we call these spinners in Sweden too, yeah. Okay, it comes in handy with a car this size? Yeah, it's uh, useful. <laughs> it's useful. <laughs> wow. I think my favorite thing about this body, and it's a beautiful body style, but it's this, it's this rear fake vent. But it just, I just think it sets the car off. Yeah, it's very nice. And dual antennas back here, continental kit. But you know, as cool as this is, you're towing that. Yes. Now, now what, what do we have here? We have a caravan from Belgium, the biggest size of a caravans we made. It is, I mean, it is pretty large. I mean, you take the whole family in this thing. Yeah. We can use it. So did you get this first or this first? Uh, by, by the car first. Yeah. And then the caravan. Well, okay, but it's a car show. Let's get back to talking about the car. What engine did it come with? It's a 283. Oh, okay. Well, let's yeah. go have a look. Yeah, okay. Yep, that's a 283. It is. And it looks like you use it. We use it. We drive uh, 500, 600 Swedish miles per oh, year. Really? Yeah. That is using it? Yeah. We but you it. still have the oil bath air cleaner? Yeah. You need to take care of that. Check keep, it. Keep an eye on it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's absolutely beautiful, Boo. You've, you've, you've wow. just got one of the coolest setups here and really one of the coolest locations, right? Exactly. At the base of the waterfall. How yeah. did you pull that off? <laughs> I don't know. You're just lucky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, beautiful. Thanks, Boo. Thank you. 58 Chev. 
Coming up, we'll check out more classics at Nostalgia Festival in Ronneby, Sweden. But first, we'll look at updating the stereo in your classic in the AutoGeek Garage. My Classic Car is brought to you by Grundy Insurance. Hey, I got Mike Doherty in the garage with me today from Custom Auto Sound. How do you doing, Mike? Good. It's good to be back. It sure is. Great having you, man. Well, Custom Auto Sound, you guys have been bringing modern tunes to classic cars for quite a while. Since 1977. That's quite a while. Yeah. Well, back in 77, when you wanted good tunes, you'd have to take out your, your uh, stock stereo, you'd put in some aftermarket, and you'd always have to hack the thing up to do that. You had great tunes, but then, yeah. you know, later on you realized you probably shouldn't have hacked that dash up, because mm -hmm. now that car's worth something. And it's worth right. less because you've hacked up the dash. Right. You guys solve that problem because you make all of these units that will fit right into factory openings. Right. And I mean, the earliest thing you did was really an AM FM cassette. Back mm -hmm. in the cassette days, people still have those. Right. That's what this baby is here. But you have all these different face plates and all these different sizes to fit into the factory openings. This face plate goes for goes with what? That's a 59 Impala. So I'll slap that baby in. It's going to look just like the 59 Impala. Mm -hmm. radio nobody's going to know but it's going to sound a heck of a lot better right now stepping it up a little bit this is just an am fm but it's a very mm -hmm. clean am fm and it can handle uh, other inputs like ipod or something right. right you can plug ipod into the back of it you can add amplifiers to it faceplate for uh that faceplate is a 55 chevy all right how about over here now let's uh, take it up another level this baby would fit into what uh, that one is for a 58 to 67 volkswagen and, and we also stepped it up it has usb flash drive input on it so you can, uh, you've got your, you got your tunes on a thumb drive, you just uh, plug that baby in. Plug it in, you control it all from the buttons on the radio. And at the end there? This, this is another 630, same model as this one, but that one is for a 67, 68 Camaro. So again, these things are all going to look stock, they're going to fit in the stock opening. Right. It's fantastic. You know, we have about 400 different applications. That's quite a few. Yeah. <laughs> well, then you also can help me out. You know, I've got, I've got the, great, uh, the great electronics, but speakers were always an issue, too. And without chopping things up, you've come up with these dual voice cone speakers, right? I mean, it, uh, it takes, in, takes in both inputs, left yeah. and right, and runs two voice cones, but with a fairly large bass cone. Right. And it'll still fit, fit up in a dash. Fit in the stock location. Just like car. it should. Yeah. But secret audio, you did, you're on geez, at least your third generation of secret audio. I think right. that's the coolest thing you guys do. If you, really, you know, if you don't want to see anything, that's it right there. Right. Yeah, with Secret Audio, it's kind of a remote system. It's got a black box that you can mount in the trunk or under the seat. you got a cable that goes from the control panel. Uh, you can also flush mount this control panel or, or bracket mount it mm -hmm. and control the system from this. If you mount this in the glove box or, or in an ashtray, you can also control it with an RF remote. And I can use this kind of stealth antenna for it to, you know, kind of stash that someplace too, and I don't see anything, and I'm controlling right. it with RF, right. remote, it's the greatest. But yeah. you've, you've stepped it up one more time with Secret yeah. Audio. One more step one up. One more step. We've got a new remote for the Secret Audio. It's RF remote. Uh, you don't need the LCD display. This remote gives you all the information right on the so LCD. So it's two-way. Wow. Or two-way RF. Mm -hmm. So all the information from your radio stations you're listening to or the name of the song you're listening to comes up on the screen. You control the whole system by wireless remote. Now that, that's got to be the coolest thing you've done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> it's rechargeable. It's, you know... I mean, people, people fret about where to, where to mount yeah. this. Now they don't have to worry. You don't even think about it. You just That's use the remote. Totally awesome. Well, it is great. You know, you've got, you've got these great classic cars. You never had good music. And you got to have, if you're going to cruise, you, you got to have tunes. You need tunes. You need yeah. tunes. So you guys have taken care of that, and you haven't, you haven't damaged the car. So, hey, if you want to learn anything more about all this great custom auto sound equipment, log on to MyClassicCar.com. I love that remote, man. That, that's trick. That's, That's my favorite. That's the key, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> AutoGeek.net. We are car care. Next, we'll get back to Sweden for Nostalgia Festival. Well, Kenneth, this is a stunningly beautiful car. Only the second one I've ever seen in my life. This is an Arnott Bristol, correct? Correct. This is um, what year? 
It was made in 1954. Now, is this is this an aluminum car or is it a steel car? Uh, it's a mixture. All the lids and the, the removable parts are aluminum, and the rest is uh, mild steel. Wow, I mean, it's and it's really, really gorgeous. Uh, and and the, the colors, the white and blue, is that a yeah. significance of any? Yes, it's American racing colors, and um, the white is the typical 1950s white, and um, the blue is the American, um, what do they call the flag? <laughs> yeah, the flag, the blue of the flag. Yeah, the blue of the flag. <laughs> Beautiful. What a tiny little windshield. Yeah, it's, it's not a windshield, it's a wind, uh, you wind know, screen. Wind screen. Yeah, yeah. Which um, actually, I look above the screen. So. Hence, hence the goggles, right? Yes. <laughs> I need the goggles uh, in order not to have too many bugs in my eyes. So <laughs> the wind is actually passing over my head perfectly. And the gauges, when I first looked at them, I thought they were a Stuart Warner, but they're actually Smith. Yes, they are Smith. All the uh, electrics are, are British made, Lucas and um, Smith. How's that Lucas thing working out? Fine, you no need you, but you need doubles of them. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Double coils and everything. Yeah, but it, you know, it's a, a gorgeous car. And, and, and clearly Italian in its, in its styling. I mean, it's so sleek and so swept. Yes. Design houses in Italy use the same basic design for their different versions of Maserati, Ferrari, and so on. And if you look at the rear wheel arches, it Jaguar E-types 10 e years later. Absolutely. A lot of cars took design yeah. influence from this car. It took pieces of it. Yeah, yeah. So Is it still Bristol powered? It's a Bristol engine in there. Let's it's a two liter Bristol engine, six cylinders. Let's look at it. So it's a uh, two liter, okay. uh, 148 bhp, it's a Bristol sports engine. Three carbs? Yes, they are made by Solix, British Solix carbs. And, uh, is it a hemispherical head in these? It is, so it's very efficient. And um, there's a single camshaft with uh, push rods uh -huh. coming cross over like that. Oh, how interesting. Firstly, for the in inlet side and the outlet side. Well, I heard, it, I heard it earlier today and it's just got a beautiful note. <laughs> The cam is really free revving and the carburetors are working fine, so it's a beautiful, beautiful music. <laughs> it's like music. It is like music, yeah. Now you are, you're from Sweden. I'm from Sweden, so... This can be, this has got to be the only one of these in Sweden. Uh, I got another one, actually. Okay. <laughs> oh, they're two, but they're both yours. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, well, Kenneth, it's absolutely beautiful. I'm so glad you brought it to the you show very today. Much. Thank you. <laughs> Need parts for your project? then check out this week's Classic Car Marketplace. Corvette Central has been a leading manufacturer and distributor of Corvette parts and accessories since 1975. We offer free detailed full-color catalogs for each Corvette generation, as well as an accessory catalog. Our updated website allows you to search, view, and order parts anytime. From C1 to ZR1, only Corvette Central has it all. Visit us online or call today. AutoGeek.net has everything you need to keep your vehicle looking its best. Mothers, Meguiar's, Wolfgang, Diamondite, 3M, Pinnacle, and more. AutoGeek.net carries over 60 brands. AutoGeek selection is huge, our prices are low, our expert staff can answer any question you have, and we ship right to your door. AutoGeek.net, we are car care. Need parts for your F-Series truck, Bronco, Classic or Fox Mustang, Camaro, Chevelle El Camino Malibu, or Firebird? Then get your free catalog from NPD, the nation's always in stock restoration parts supplier. Call 888-893-FAST for your free catalog or visit nationalpartsdepot.com. Still ahead, we'll see more cool rides at Nostalgia Festival in Ronneby, Sweden. Well, Ronnie, this is a car that I've never even heard of before. It's a, it's a Borgfart, right? That's right. German, I'm assuming? German, made in Bremen, north of Germany. And this is a, a 1961 Isabella Coupe. That's correct. Well, it's a very interesting car. When I saw it, I, I actually thought it was a Carmen Ghia. And then I thought, well, it's too big. And it's not quite right. It, but it looks like a Carmen Ghia. You're right. It looks very <laughs> much like one. <laughs> why? why? Well, the thing is that the, uh, the car exhibition in, in Paris, 1953 or 1954, he was there with his wife. Mr. Borgward. Mr. Borgward, yes. His uh, wife fell in love with the Carmen Ghia. And, uh, well, uh, he made this one. <laughs> <laughs> so he made her a car. <laughs> yeah. Wow. For a Christmas present. That's nice. Had Boy. made the first one. And then uh, people, they, they liked it, so he started to produce it. Well, how many did they make? About 9,000. And from what years? From, from 1957 till uh, 61. Wow, that's, I mean, that's not a heck of a lot of them, really. No, really. And, and again, I, you know, I, I've never seen one. Did they import into the U.S. or not? About uh, half the production of the coupe went to the U.S. 
So like like over four thousand cars. Yeah, like, approximately, I've never seen approximately. one. It's, it's a it's a and it's a gorgeous car. Would this would this two tone have been a, a stock combination? This is original colors. In those days, the two tones were very popular. Actually, it's a great looking interior too, and I love the uh, you know this is almost. I don't know, English in the wood trim and everything. Oh, it's yeah. almost, almost Jaguar in that It's respect. very nice and it's very comfortable to ride actually because if you look at the seats, they are not like an English sports car. No. They are very comfortable. They're like seats. a lounge chair. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> column shift, three speed? Four speed. Four speed on the yeah, column? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. And this black and white combination in the interior would have been stock also? That stock. Man, yeah. you know, it, it just, it looks like it would be a fun car to drive. It's very fun. You, you drive it like a normal car with other cars these days. Uh-huh. Yeah. Two-piece bumper? Two-piece. If you damage one side, you only had to change half of them. That actually makes a lot yeah. of sense. Yeah, well, <laughs> save money. <laughs> Why not? No. And even these taillights, that was unique to, to Borgvard? Yes. Now, does it have a Borgvard engine? Borgvard engine. Let's go look at that, baby. Let's do that. Here we go. Oh, now that, that's interesting. I've never seen anything quite like that. Is that an aluminum head? Aluminum head. Interesting. And yeah. it's a four cylinder. Four cylinder, 1.5 liters. With a, oh, a, a downdraft, it's a Solex carburetor. Solex. Yeah. Wow. Yes. You know, it's a very rectangular engine bay, but it just it just drops right in there. Yes, it's very compact and very durable. Wow. It's it's really a distinctive, very, very unique car. I, I, I love the, I just love everything about it. Ryan, thank you so much for showing this to me. Thank you very much. Beautiful. Well, Peter, this is a cute little machine. I have yes. never seen one of these. This yeah. is a, no, I haven't. This is a, yeah. a, a 1964 64. Janetta yes. G4. It's right-hand drive. Is it a British car? Yes, it is. It's tiny. How tall? It's about uh, a meter, 99 centimeters. 99 centimeters. That uh, is hilarious. So it's all fiberglass. Yes, and it and it's a, on a cook chair it's system. a tiny little interior, wee little yeah. interior. Yes. But you have Narrow. nice gauging and, and toggle yes. switches. I like that. Very yeah, short yeah, shifter. Yes. Bang, bang, bang. And a, and a full roll cage. Yes, you probably is. want that in a fiberglass car. Yes. Oh, yes. It's just so little. Yes, it's a very little car. What's it powered by? This is a four-cylinder, four Cortina oh, motor. Well, let's go look at that. Uh, yes, we can do. It's very easy. One finger. Oh, that is nice. Oh, yes. So, <laughs> Janetta, but yes. it's actually a Ford Cortina engine. Yes, GT. And it's a bit uh, stronger now. Yeah. It's uh, double carburetors. Big and webers. Uh, Some headers. And, uh, it's a uh, stainless steel uh, camshaft and uh, it's a balanced uh -huh, and a uh -huh. bit alloy. And uh, it's very... So it's light, you know, they've lightened yes, it. Lightened, it's alloy lightened bell everything. housing and, yes, and beefed yes, up the engine. Yes. And what's the suspension from? Is it, I mean, it almost looks Triumph, is it? Yes, this is Triumph, the front wheel and the brakes. And the most triumph parts and uh, four parts <laughs> come from England. And I mixed it. And something, some parts are, of course, uh, Guinetta's own manufacturer. So, did you buy a complete car or did you yes. buy that as a no. kit? When no, you... no. I think you, you could buy it as a kit in 1964. Okay. It's a bit cheaper, but you can even have it mounted in the factory. Wow. Well, there's some little cars here, but this is a little car. It's a cool car. I love it, Peter. <laughs> 1964 Janetta G4. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Beautiful, thank you. Stay close, there's plenty more to check out from Sweden's Nostalgia Festival. My Classic Car has been brought to you by Grundy Insurance and by u -Code It, the official floor coating of the Auto Geek Garage. Well, Johan, I'm in Sweden. We got to talk about a Volvo. Yes, of course. Of course. <laughs> and this is your yeah. Volvo. This is a 65 122S. Yes. Correct. It's a it's a station wagon. Now, this is your car, right? Yes, it is. And you've kind of, you know, you've got kind of a mild 60s custom going. Oh, exactly. Here. That's the right word. That, that, that's what you were looking for, yes. right? Why did you pick this? I have always liked uh, station wagons. Yeah. So I do too, I'm, actually. Yes. It, it looks like you've lowered it down a little bit. Yes, I have cut off the coil springs. You've put Foos wheels on it, yes. but they can't have almost an American racing pattern. Exactly. It's just a nice touch. Yeah. <laughs> How about the rack? Was that a, a 60s rack too? Yes, it was original. And the 60 luggage, of Gotta course. Gotta have it all. Now, in the interior, you've updated the seats. Those look like, you know, like Recaros or something. 
Yes, it's Recaro, who has a new pull string in the old style. And then not too many other modifications. Of course, your dice the shifter. Steering wheels and uh, the tack. The tack, exactly. But otherwise, it's a it's a 65 Volvo. Yes, it is. And would this have been a, a, a Volvo color? It's uh, a Volvo color, yeah. yes. But man, when you get to the back, there's no question this is a Volvo. Yeah, I mean, it's just, they all look like this. Yes. <laughs> But I, 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 I love looking at that. Now, you were telling me you actually like build Volvo-powered race cars, right? Yes. I have always worked with uh, race cars, or Volvo race cars, especially. And um, so you probably don't still have the 1.8 engine in here anymore? No. I a little, little tougher. it up a little. little, little bit. Let's go look at it. <laughs> wow, that, that doesn't look like a stock 1.8 uh, Volvo engine. That looks, that looks very nice. Yes. So what am I looking at? It's a newer model. This model comes, uh, it's a B20, we call it. It's okay. two liters. So it's two engine. liter. Uh -huh. Yes. And then I have uh, boarded out and uh, steel rods in the bottom and, and uh, bigger valves. Weber bigger carbs. Curves, Weber carbs. And so hotter cam, probably. Hotter cam, yeah, of course. All the goodies. Yeah. So, how many horsepower now? It pulls out uh, 200 now. Wow. So the original uh, 1.8, about what, 75? 85 80, horsepower, yeah. yes. So 75 to 200. That's an increase. Oh, it's better. It's better. <laughs> Not like the race cars, but it's better. This was kind of a, a car you always want to do, almost a, a car of your dreams. Yes, this was my goal for two years ago. Oh, to, to be get... here at this show today. Today. Wow. Well, was... you made it. You... I made it, but uh, not so much sleep, but I made it. <laughs> but now you made it onto American television. <laughs> Beautiful you. car, Johan. Thank you. Oh, man. We had a great time at Nostalgia Festival here in Ronneby, Sweden. I'm telling you, these Swedes are serious car nuts. And what a beautiful place to have a car show. I think I'm coming back. You might want to check this one out yourself. Attention, my classic car fans. Go online now to check out our latest selection of DVDs. Just can't get enough my classic car? Don't miss a single show. Get all 26 episodes from the 2012 season in one DVD set.